G'day viewers, Rob from Milky Mouth Tackle. Today's video is all about what you need to know when you're fishing for whiting from a kayak. Well, currently we're at the end of December and about this time of year, I turn my attention from the snapper over to the whiting and flathead. Tip one, what you need when you're chasing whiting on a kayak. There's clearly restricted space in the kayak. So therefore it's very important that you understand the exact gear that you need to take out on board with you for a session. Equally, it's important to keep your gear in order as disorder can turn into a bad session quickly. As we always say, it's an important tip to understand and know exactly what species of fish you're targeting when you head out. However, it's also important to know what other types of species are around in the area in case the whiting aren't biting and you can turn your attention to those other species. So it's also important to have some extra gear that's also targeted towards other species. Over the years, professional anglers have always preached it's best to stick with the target species that you're going with. Given the limitations of speed and distance that a kayak can travel, you'll need to bring your A-game when you're targeting whiting. So make sure you're carrying the right gear for the job. Carrying around half your tackle box of unpractical items will only slow your kayak down. So make sure you fully understand exactly what you need to target whiting. When it comes to fishing rods for kayaks and targeting whiting, try a six to seven foot rod and around about one to three kilos. For, I prefer to use around about a seven foot rod because it gives you a good distance to cover and you can still fish right around the bow of your kayak, uh, ensuring that you're able to reach out and make life a lot easier. From my own experience, you don't want to use a rod larger than seven foot. You'll start to run into issues when you're trying to land a large fish. In recent times, I've seen manufacturers start to target kayakers with shorter rods, shorter than a six foot. For me, personally, I don't particularly like those because I don't think that the shorter rods cast um, a, a larger distance where you get a bit of a longer rod around about that seven foot mark and it'll give you a good casting distance. Personally, I prefer a one piece rod. Shakespeare Ugly Sticks, I find the best. They're hardy, they're strong, they're just about indestructible. Rods are subject to a lot of destruction in a kayak with small space around it. So I've found over the years that the Ugly Sticks for me are actually the best rods to use. They can take a good pounding. They just bounce back every time. If you're going out open ocean and you're going out past the breakers, then and you need to stow away all your gear, maybe a two-piece rod is a good idea for you. Nevertheless, if you're an estuarine or a bay angler like myself, then it is best to be prepared and have your rods all set up before you actually even launch out. Nothing harder than on a windy day trying to tie knots, especially if you use braid, inside a confined space, sometimes very difficult. Preparation is key, always prepare at home, set your rods up before you even out it onto the water. Rigging up the night before is a ritual for most anglers. However, having pre-made rigs handy in your pocket is always a great idea when you're on the kayak, because when you hit a snag, you bust off, lose some tackle, then you want to be in the water as quick as possible. And the best way to do that is having pre-made rigs. Now you can make your own pre-made rigs or you can purchase them from your local tackle shop or online. You haven't got a rod in the water. If you've got backup rods, you can put your backup rod in, pull your backup rod out, throw it out, then start re-rigging the other one. If you've got a pre-made rig, you pull out your pre-made rig, put it on your rod and that one's ready to go. Put that as your backup and keep fishing the other ones. When I'm fishing my local spot, most of the time I've got my pre-made rigs either in my pocket uh, on my PFD. And as you can see in the picture here, you'll see that it easily stores away all the pre-made rigs. In terms of pliers and knives, they're the only things that I really tether up on my kayak. I don't really tether up my fishing rods or any of my other gear because I don't want to get tangled in those, in those lines. So I keep it as minimal as possible. And I couldn't tell you how many times I've had to scour around for my knife and pliers when you, when you actually need it. So they're the only things that I actually tie up and I only tie them up to a very, very short length. The other piece of gear I don't normally worry about when I'm actually uh, kayak fishing for whiting is a net. Now I have caught a few big whiting in my day, which you think would probably need a net. However, most of the time you can just sling them over, pull them to your body and stop them from flapping around. So most of the time you actually don't need a net. They're not that big a fish to warrant having a, a net. In some cases they are. In most cases you won't need a net to land a King George whiting from a kayak. How to locate whiting. So the first step obviously in hunting for King George whiting is learning how to locate them. Whiting can be pretty easily found but they do travel around from patches of sand so they sometimes can be troublesome to find. They're a school fish 
So once you actually find them, you can potentially bag out really quickly. As we mentioned before, the limitations of kayaks movement in the water, depending on the type of model you have, this is what makes whiting fishing from a kayak challenging is because they, they are fish that move around. So locating this is a half, half the battle. My rule of thumb is I'll anchor up in a spot that looks likely that it has fish and that meets all the criteria of where whiting would not be hanging around looking for a feed. And I anchor up for about 15 minutes. And if I don't catch anything in the first 15 minutes, then I pull up anchor, pull up the burly pot and move not too far away, but I'll move to the next sand patch and drop down the anchor and try again. And I keep doing that process to, until I actually find the whiting. So what you wanna look for is weed beds. And in amongst those weed beds, you wanna look for sand patches. This is the perfect spot for catching whiting. So what I like to do is I like to anchor up on top of a weed patch and cast my baits into the sand patch. Now, if you're going to cast into the weed patches, try using a Pat Noster rig, which will lift your bait up slightly out of the weed bed so it's not buried in amongst the weed, it'll sit up slightly above the weed bed. And with your Pat Noster rig, you can actually use little floats and you can put your little floats on top of your Pat Noster rigs, right on top of your hook. It will just float your bait above the weed patch and your bait can just hover above the weed where your sinker will be down in the actual sand patch. Little floats on your actual dropper loops. Another really good tip is you'll find schools and schools of whiting in more in the shallow water than you will in the deeper water. Not saying they're not in the deeper water. They're a great fish to target for kayakers as we're actually, sometimes we don't have access to that deeper water. King George whiting will just be in very shallow water. Around about two to five meters is idealistic. Now, depending on the tidal movement in the water, if you're in strong tidal movement, then you might need to employ a different tactic and you might need to employ a different type of rig. Best baits. Whiting love a good soft bait. Mussels, pippies, cockles, worms, bass yabbies. And don't forget squid. If you're gonna use squid, make sure you tenderize it and let the smells of the squid come out. Another great option of bait is to make a concoction of both squid mussels or squid and pippies. Sometimes by putting the squid on the end of the hook, it will help keep the soft baits like pippies and uh, mussels on your hook. Now, if I have to choose a, ba a best bait, it will definitely be bass yabbies. However, the problem with bass yabbies is one, they're hard to pump. If you know where they are, you can get them. Two, they come off the hook very easy where the mechanism of um, King George whiting is to suck their food in, which sometimes they can just suck your bait straight off. So from my experience, the best bait is definitely bass yabbies, but they're hard to keep on the hook. Another key factor is also to bring the fish to you by using burley. In terms of burley, I like to use mussels, crush up a heap of mussels, some pellets, some bread, and put all that in and a bit of a tuna oil mix, put it all in and throw that into a burley bucket and dump it over the side and consistently shake that bucket around to get that, those smells into the water column. Now, the other thing you wanna do is when you're peeling your mussels or your pippies, throw them over the side, crush them up and throw them over the side. This will also help attract them to you. Tackle. Now, there's heaps of gear on the market that can be utilized for whiting. Some can be quite inexpensive and some can be very expensive. So it obviously comes down to the angler's preference and budget on what tackle to use. Whiting can be an awesome fish to hook onto, especially on light gear. They always deliver an awesome fight beyond your expectations. Just keep that in mind when you're selecting your gear. Whiting are a curious fish and will often come up and have a good look at a good lure. People catch whiting on surface lures up north and also they'll obviously take a bait. So it's a good idea to keep this in mind that they actually will take a lure or a soft plastic. Um, there's many ways of doing it. Uh, I prefer the turtleback worm with a little stinger hook in the back and cast that out when I'm using soft plastics. It's a great way if you haven't got fresh worms, put a little bit of scent on it, cast it out. It works all the time, it's really good. Or you can just leave it over as a sleeper, dragging it on the drift. I've caught a lot of whiting using that tactic as well. I don't fish in very fast flowing water, so I favor two separate rigs. The humble running sinker is always a great rig to use. Uh, the, the main rig that I love to use is just a Pat Noster with a long shank hook with little Lumo beads, pink or red, and a little bit of tubing. 
that's my go-to. I love it because a long shank, you can pile up the bait, the mussels and the squid. You can pile that onto the hook uh, and get a good size bait on there and it take, make it, it's a little bit harder for them to get it off. The other rig that I really like to use is a flasher rig, a really small flasher rig. So they're made for whiting. Um, there's obviously, there's, there's standard flashes and there's the UV material flashes as well, which work really good. Um, and with those, I prefer a circle hook. So, so those are the type of the best rigs that I have um, used and that I have most success with. But the best principle to keep in mind is just keep it simple. Use, just use simple rigs and you'll uh, bag out pretty easy. Now the whiting flashes are great as well. They really are. They work really well. Just make sure you invest in the sharpest hooks you possibly can. And if you're going to buy pre-made rigs, ensure that you purchase quality rig and not a cheap uh, rig from eBay or Amazon. Uh, don't waste your time with that. If you don't have the budget for that, by all means, get the cheaper hooks, but make sure you've got a sharpener and sharp, pre-sharpen those hooks yourself. It'll make a big difference. So here's just a couple of quick tips. There's more in-depth videos that we'll cover going forward on our, on our YouTube channel. Just make sure you keep your light as light as possible. If you're fishing cross sand, so you can actually use a very light line in your fishing and targeting King George Whiting. Depending on the environment that you're fishing, whether you're fishing in fast flowing or slow flowing water, use as light a sinker as possible. Obviously, if you're in fast flowing water, you're gonna to need to use a heavier sinker. But if you're in slow flowing water, use as the lighter sinker as you possibly can. What I also do, another tip, is to use a mixture of hooks, long shank or circle hooks, so you can fish multiple rods and you can see which one's working and then switch all your rigs over to whatever the actual fish you're biting on. Don't forget to change up your bait types. Try worms, try bass abbeys, try mussels and see what they're biting on. So each day, every day, they might be biting on something different. So have each rod that you actually have out, try and have a different type of bait on each of those rods till you figure out which one's working. Remember, keep on the move. Make sure if you're not catching anything after 15 minutes, keep on moving. Move until you find the fish. Burly up hard. Make sure you've got plenty of burly and burly hard. And obviously, if you catch a fish, try casting exactly into the same spot, remembering that there are school fish so they will congregate all together. And the other thing is to try and keep the fish in the water as long as possible. When you bring a whitey in, they actually spew up their, their actual lunch. And that actually, that spew regurgitation actually helps keep the other fish in the area. Well, there you have it. There's some tips for you when you're on a kayak trying to target King George whitey. Now's the season. So take those tips over the next month. We definitely will be pumping out more videos, more specific tips about how to target King George Whiting over the next month or two. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of those videos that are coming your way. So thanks for watching, always appreciate it. Give us a thumbs up, helps the channel grow, and we'll see you in the next video.